but i think the best place to look at metrics is your first party data that uh, that actually comes to you directly so for example if you're using hubspot and hubspot forms right so hubspot forms would give you that data directly to you like how much leads are coming and uh, the sessions exactly how many sessions are uh, coming to you so i think just looking at that data and trying not to use basically trying to use less third party apps and more like first party data that you have will really help in making those decisions Welcome to Agents of Change, a podcast about the future of B2B marketing, featuring insights from executives at top agencies. I'm Danielle O'Neill with Leadtail. Let's hop on in. Welcome back to Agents of Change. I'm excited today to have Apoorv Sharma. He is the senior growth marketer over at Sasmic. Um, he has a very detailed background with performance marketing, ROI, MQLs. He is all things paid marketing. So we're excited to dive in and learn more about your experience today. So welcome, Apoorv. Thank you. Um, Yes. So a little bit about my background. I just like you said, um, I am senior growth marketer at Sasmic, a small boutique marketing agency run by a few different kind of marketers, all of the same age. We all like to do the same things. It's, It's just fun to be in a place where, you know, we're all on the same wavelength and yeah it's it's nice to work it's completely remote so it's super fun it's flexible so yeah we're all able to do the things that we want to do and yes we have a few clients that we are working with we try to keep it small our founder Ricardo he doesn't like to expand too quick too soon which I really love because we've seen that happening previously in different agencies and it kind of it can go wrong very quickly so so yeah, that's my background. And before this, I was in another marketing agency uh, based out of the US. It was called Market Aid. Again, really amazing, very talented people. We were 35 uh, people strong. And um, I stepped into marketing five years ago. Before that, also I was into marketing, but I had a broader role in a company. It wasn't just marketing, but also business development and other things. Um, yeah. But um, it was a family business, so you have to like look at a lot of different things. But after that, I stepped into marketing because I got kind of tired of that because I wanted to just do one thing. Um, stepped into marketing, online marketing, started from an Indian marketing agency and then just kind of grew into different ones and now working at Sasmic. Nice. And is that where you like kind of developed your your paid role and and almost your love of paid marketing? Uh, at my first job? Yeah. Yes, I did. I actually did. I would experiment a lot. There wasn't a lot to experiment with, but I would still try to like do it because I was so in love with like doing small experiments, this and that. Most of it did not work because of the kind of industry we were in. But I was so infatuated by all these things that I took up a much lower paying job and marketing agency out of my comfort zone just so that I could step into it and do it. And I did some really good work there. We actually won a HubSpot Impact Award for the company I was leading marketing for. And from there, I just like kind of like got my got the hang of things and I started believing, okay, what I'm doing is working. And then just kind of stepped into like different uh, companies after that. And just, it's been going pretty good since then. All right, Apoor. So I know that paid ads is really kind of your wheelhouse. This is what you love. This is what lights you up and gets you excited. So let's just dive into some paid ads. Um, So on an initial conversation that we had had, you had talked about the three steps of the psychology and really tapping into the psychology of paid ads. So right. let's start there. Let's let's just talk about the psychology of it. Yeah. So the first thing was like just just trying to figure out what the people want, right? Like we need to figure out what people want. So the first step into that is just figuring out what people are asking for on the internet around your product or or the pain points around your product. There's a lot of things that we do. The first thing that we do is go to competitors and see what they are doing. But sometimes that won't give us the whole picture. It will give us the patterns into like, okay, what might be working? Because if a few of our competitors are doing something similar, it means that this might be working. And obviously they have their experiments going on. So we can't really 
pull out anything and everything from our competitors. So it's very important to check those patterns to see like what they are doing. And then going into forums and going into specialized niche um, websites to see what the users are talking about, what they need, or even just putting out questions yourself so that you get the right kind of answers from uh, probably different people in the same domain or uh, people who are using similar products. Just, you know, compiling all that information, just creating a database of that information is the first step into like understanding what people want in the current date. The second thing is to really, really, really stay away from and step away, actually not stay away, but step away from data and metrics and actually go into what would come next in, uh, in, in this domain, what your product is in. You sometimes need to make several assumptions based on what people are asking. And I think, and it might sound counterintuitive, I do feel that assumptions are very important to make. Um, it can go really, it can go really wrong, or it can be really right. That really depends on you know what your uh, you know research is. And again, like research is so important. Not everyone can do research, right? Everyone can think, okay, we know how to Google, but it's not just that. You need to go into the right places. You cannot take out information from people who are uh, just started using such a product, or people who just use it just so that they can get by through the day. You need to actually go into um, forums or places where people are, you know, really uh, going deep into products like these and figuring out solutions. So knowing where to go is so important. So the research part, you know, so yeah, basically coming back to the assumptions, you need to make certain assumptions as to what it uh, could be in the future. That is the second step. And yeah, and you need to add on to your product. You need to add those USPs to your product, to your messaging. Uh, when it comes to marketing, and I think in paid ads, it's it 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 is really useful to add a flair, add a personality to your brand because uh, just going by numbers and stats, it will probably give you good short term results. But then again, in three months, it's going to be you you'll need something new because it's already gone. Because we all know that in a in in SaaS space, everything changes so quick. What's working today? You'll see like in three months, it just stopped working and you'll keep trying to figure out what happened, what happened, why is my conversions down, everything is fine, I'm getting the same amount of clicks, I'm getting the same amount of impressions, but my conversions are down, you'll never be able to figure it out. So I think that part where you need to make those assumptions and add a flair um, through the personality of the brand is the important third step that you need to take while making these decisions. So I think like this all like, comes back to how uh, the psychology, how people are reacting today towards certain products, how people might react tomorrow. Uh, you need to figure that out from the research and data that you've gathered and then uh, create your findings and go ahead with, it, it could be paid or organic or any kind of campaign. It, it can be useful in uh, all the campaigns. So, so yeah, those are the three things. Well, and knowing how important those metrics are and those analytics that we really need to dive into, and that there's constant changes, like for instance, GA4 is, is changing again. Um, where where do you suggest that we as marketers go to really dig in and analyze these metrics that we're looking at and avoiding those those overall kind of vanity metrics that first level to give yeah. us what we really need? Yeah. I think the best place to go and have a look is definitely not GA4 as of today, because <laughs> people don't know how to use it. Even I find it pretty complicated. I think, it's, you know, sometimes it happens that you go from one tool to another and it can be complicated for you because you are trained on something else and now you have to train on something else. But GA4 is just complicated and people need to like get the hang of it and it's not going to be an easy task. But I think the best place to look at metrics is your first party data that uh, that actually comes to you directly. So for example, if you're using HubSpot and HubSpot Farms, Right, so HubSpot Forms would give you that data directly to you, like how much leads are coming and uh, the sessions, exactly how many sessions are uh, coming to you. So I think just looking at that data and trying not to use, basically trying to use less third-party apps and more like first-party data that you have will really help in making those decisions because anyway, like a lot of, if you use a lot of different analytical tools, like one of our clients, all the numbers at all the different places are different. So yeah, so I always advise them to just look at the first party data where it's directly coming to you instead of 
uh, you know, going through APIs and stuff here and there. It's just best to like see it where it's actually coming in. So, so yeah. And that really depends on what tool we are using as, as the one that we're gathering data from. Novel concept. Look at the platform, not just the tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think we all get caught up in tools far too often. Yeah. And so it's a good reminder for us to remember just to look at the data itself and where it's coming from. Yeah, for sure. And just knowing metrics and really the fact that we can get so many, what are maybe some metrics that we're not digging into that we should be? Yeah. It, it used to be the average type, uh, average time on page and bounce rate and everything till like, you know, in a year back. But I think today it's, it's going deeper into, um, I would say things like the scroll depth of the page, um, or it would be something like, it's very important for us to understand that the more time people spend with us is how how likely they are to invest with us or use our product. So just optimizing those flows from uh, what is the flow of people like, what is the basic flow? Are they going from the home page to the product page or are they going to the pricing page? Just optimizing those flows instead of in, uh, individually optimizing certain pages is essential in today's state because it's really the flow that dictates if a person is going to buy a product or not. You'll see certain flows and you'll be like, okay, the conversion rate of this flow is much higher than the one for the others. For example, if someone is going from the homepage to the blog, you might like uh, just, you know, he might not convert, he, she might not convert, but if they're going through certain different web pages of your website, they're likely to convert more. So just Creating that flow, if you see that person is going from the solutions page to the pricing page, it's important to have a pricing button on the solution uh, solutions page itself so that once the person stops reading the, uh, all the uh, content on the page, they directly go to the next page, which is the most, uh, which has the most likelihood of converting. So, so yeah, just uh, organizing those flows is, I think, the next step people would need to take care of. I love that. Thinking about organizing the flow and optimizing for the flow as opposed to the page optimization. That's because right. we tend to just get so caught up in page optimization that we don't think about that flow necessarily when it comes to the paid metrics. That's right, because just optimizing a page, you know, it could be your demo page, right? Obviously, if people are coming to your website, they would convert on the demo page, but people are not making decisions on one page. People are looking at a lot of different pages. So they just need to look like one entity instead of several different entities. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a, such a great reminder. Thank you for dropping that little nugget, Corv. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're thinking about the paid side of it, what are we not thinking about when it comes to setting up our pain? I think, um, I would say what we're thinking about too much um, as paid marketers are Google ad copies um, that we're doing because I think we really don't need to spend too much time on it and rather we should spend that time into you know optimizing the landing pages that they're going to because that is where everything is going to happen so I'll tell you like the major like what people do uh, people would go onto Google type what they want and they would open the top three links without even looking uh, what they're opening Sure, it makes a difference to a few people who are savvy. Yes, your CTRs will change a little bit if you spend a lot of time on your Google ad copies. But if you just let them stay like whatever they are and you change it three or four times, you'll see the CTR will go from maybe 7% to 8% or 9% or come down to 6%, right? But what's, but what's really happening is your landing page is the one that is going to convert um, everything, right? So just spending too much time on Google Ads wouldn't change a lot of things. It would just be the landing pages and spending most of the time there that would really improve your conversion. So, so yeah. So just louder for the people in the back, Google Ads messaging doesn't need to be so complicated. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and just to elaborate on that, get your headline one right, get your headline two right, forget about the headline three, add something if you want to, that's fine. Let the description say lorem ipsum, it's okay. Just headline one and headline two would do good to your ad and that's about it. And make it all about that landing page. 
Yeah, for sure. Get them to stay once you've got them to click on it. Yes. Yes. I think that's that's an important message for everybody, just that Google Ads messaging. We all just spend so much time. How can we make this message so impactful in this one little paragraph that we have? And it doesn't need to be so difficult. It doesn't need to be. People are not. As consumers, you have to think as consumers, right? Like we like to perfect our ads. But as consumers, we really aren't thinking that much when we're typing something, right? We want, if the keyword is in there and I've searched for something, I know that, okay, this might be relevant to me. Okay, let me open uh, the link and see. I'm not getting charged for opening links. There would People open five links together or three links together. They're not getting charged for any of that. So it's best to like just keep it simple, go ahead with it and really like see what the competitors are doing on the landing page, see what you can do with the messaging see where the pain points are and just like try to perfect that instead. Yeah. Yeah. That's really smart. So Port, what are some resources that you would recommend maybe to new marketers that are looking to get more into paid and get more comfortable with all of, of paid and all the changes and understanding all the nuances of this side of marketing? Yeah, I think if someone wants to specialize into paid marketing, I think the number one resource, I don't know right now, but around one year back, uh, it was the courses from CXL. So if you go to CXL.com, they really have in-depth courses. Um, I found them uh, to be very useful because even when I was doing paid ads for a good three years, when I stepped into that course, again, it taught me new things into how you can uh, create bidding strategies, portfolio bidding strategies, and how you can uh, manipulate the target CPAs using a shared bidding, uh, shared bidding strategy and all those things. So I think like if you really want to go in depth, it's pretty good to just check out that research, uh, resource, which is on cxl.com and uh, just go through the paid uh, courses that they have. They're really good. And for new marketers in general, I think, marketingexamples.com is really good because it's super intuitive and it really teaches you the simplicity of marketing and how we really don't need to overcomplicate it. So yeah, marketingexamples.com would be second for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I just have to ask, what are your favorite type of ads to run? My favorite type of ads, uh, it's obviously going to be like e-commerce ads because, you know, you put them out, you see the next day you've already made sales. I guess, <laughs> yeah, I, I think like those are the best kind of ads. You just try something new. So much and, easier than the B2B side, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the B2B side, it's so slow. Like sales cycles are like 60 days and you get tired. You'll be like asking your clients, okay, did that person convert? Okay, did it convert? Or you'll be looking at the metrics every day. And even if one customer comes up, you're like, oh my God, finally one customer. <laughs> because they're big customers, but okay, one customer. But for me, like the best kind of ads are for e-commerce, right? You just put them out, test different things. Sometimes it blows up, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's kind of like instant, right? In today's world where everyone needs instant gratification, you know, especially when you're on the internet, I think like e-commerce ads are the best if anyone wants to do that. But if if I just talk about B2B, I, I wouldn't go... Uh, towards Facebook or um, or even LinkedIn because they're pretty slow, especially Facebook. I don't think Facebook really works for high ticket B two B clients. It's it's very hard to convert. It's uh, at least in my experience. But if if it if it's about B two B, I think the best kind of ads I would say would be Google Ads because it has the right intent. And yeah, at least you have the intent, and you know people are searching for a product like yours. So you've already done the the. Prospect has done eighty percent of the job. Now you just need to like figure out how to like meet that person's needs. So I think Google Ads would be my top when it comes to B two B for sure. Nice, very yeah. good to know. And so, Apoor, one of the things we had talked about in an earlier conversation was just the marketing exhaustion. And you brought up a really good point: is that it's just cyclical in in our side of the business in marketing. This is all very cyclical. We've been there. Right. We've done that. How do you how do you get around this this particular cycle that we're in right now with it? Yes, yeah, so I would say like it it might sound like I'm avoiding the question, but I'm not. But I would say that um, I just go with it. You know, like you have to go with it. There are some external factors that play. 
uh, in your life that you just need to deal with, right? You just need to suck it up and go with it. Like if your founders or your clients think that they don't want to spend too much money, they're not stupid, even they want to grow, right? Like they're doing that for a reason. Maybe they're not too confident right now. Or maybe they just don't want to do it right now. Or maybe in actual sense, uh, there's a seasonality to their business and it might not actually work what you're doing right now. So I think it's so important as marketers to just suck it up and just like be okay with whatever's given to you, right? Just reduce the number of channels, try to work with what's working best at that given moment of time, try to expand that. If you have a winning, uh, like a combination uh, that might work for you, or if you think you really need to fight for this because it's really going to work, yes, I would also go for it, right? But you really need to find that, you really need to find that thing that that has already shown some results in a positive way you know which 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 is actually giving you a return on investment in a positive manner and if you've found that and if you're able to scale that in a way that it's it stays the same uh the return on investment i would say then it's fine but don't touch new initiatives you know experiment yes but don't try to go into new channels especially don't try to go into new channels when uh, you don't have the budget, right? You can't just experiment on five different channels at once when you have a proper budget for just one or two channels. So don't don't spread yourself too thin, I would say. Um, but yeah, just, fo- just focus good on one or two channels and just wait, just wait. Like it's going to be a few months before you again start getting those budgets that you need. And I guess you just have to go with it. There's no working around. Yeah, that's really good advice. Stick with the channels that you know and avoid trying the new ones right now until you get that budget for it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that that's good for the marketers to take away with it. So, Porv, is there anything that you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Uh, yes, I am actually. I'm I'm so excited about this one client, which which we're just onboarding. Um, I'm super excited because I've been a gamer like a good part of my life, right? So I've been a gamer for like four or five years of my life. If my wife listens to this, she'll go crazy. (laughs) But but I have been and now, uh, and I used to play Counter-Strike. It's a very popular game and a lot of people play it. And I used to play that. But now we're onboarding a client which creates skins for Counter-Strike. So basically gun skins. um, So there's like gun skins inside the game, which I used to buy as a consumer when I used to play the game. And oh. now, I, and now, yeah, and yeah, and now I have a client who I have to like help sell those skins. You know, more <laughs> of that. And I was so into it, and now I have a client doing the same thing. So I'm so excited about that because I feel like life is coming back a full circle. And like, <laughs> it's just full funny. circle moment. You're like, I know how to market yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like. It's it's funny how it's you know how it just happens sometimes. It was a big part of my life. I can't deny that. And now I have to like I'm working towards something that involves that particular game. So it's pretty fun to just like um, think about that. But that's me. That's me. But other than that, uh, I think what I'm excited about is and what I've been doing for the past few months is helping this one of our clients. It's a very established company they're going going into cdc they've actually been acquired by another um uh listed company and now like they just have a very huge budget uh, budget paid ads budget which i have to lead it's in a few millions and i have to lead that and i'm so excited because i haven't done such big budgets yet but i'm in the process of that's doing it huge. This, that's yeah, so exciting that's huge and there's so much to play around with there's so mm-hmm. much to add and subtract and i love it when you know, you're not, you're not, you don't have a glass ceiling, you're not halted at a certain spot. I love it when there's so much potential, like, okay, we haven't even tapped into those keywords. Okay, we haven't even done these kind of landing pages yet. Okay, like, you know, just we haven't even worked on the quality score yet. So just knowing that there's so much to do on such a big account, it's just like super exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. That'll be a lot of fun to play with. Yeah, yeah. And for sure. talk about like having no ceiling and just unlimited resources. Yeah, yeah. Just, just having every that. marketer's dream come true right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Give me all the budget for all the things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's sure. awesome. Well, Apoor, thank you so much for joining us today and for dropping all of these paid bombs on us. <laughs> um, I think our audience will definitely learn a lot from this. I'm glad. It was really good to be here for sure. It was super fun.
Thanks, Sapporo. We'll talk to you soon.